Hello everyone, today we are going to be playing the Forsaken Frontiers demo, which is now available on Steam. The Made in Fairyland team has released a demo for Forsaken Frontiers as part of Steam's Next Fest event, and Forsaken Frontiers is finally available to the public as a result. The demo can be found on the Steam store page, which will be in the video description below, or if you're here with me live on Twitch, exclamation mark FF as it's always been to go to the Forsaken Frontiers page, and you can find the demo there. Also go ahead and wishlist it still. The full game drops on October 21st, which is a week from today, and I'm excited to jump into this. It is a limited version of the game, the demo that is, and we'll be seeing what exactly is in it. Now when you load up, you won't start here, you will start on a cutscene that kind of goes over the game for you. So if you are new to the game, Definitely pay attention to what the game is saying because it'll tell you like how the game works, what your objectives are, and s clue you into some techniques or strategies that will help you along your way. But for everyone else, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, we're going to edit my user. I didn't get to edit my user because I think I skipped some steps here. Also, I think there's going to be some cosmetics available. We're going to check if the cosmetics are available here. The chef. All right, the chef patch and pin are in here. You also get a made in Fairyland pin. You can't see my chef patch because it is the chef fish that I use for Discord. So like the, the little handwritten fish with chef on it will go on the back of your backpack. The chef pin is the fish bowl that Twitch subscribers get on Twitch and on Discord. When you subscribe, it is right there. Shout out to Kreef for making this. Made in Fairyland is a default pin that you get with the logo. And I'm just gonna redeem some other codes here. Um, let's see, Flow, Nico's stuff is in here. Flow Flow, or code Flow Flow for Nico's stuff. So this is what Nico's pin looks like. It's the pan flag with Nico's cozy emote on top of it. Uh, let's see, the Flow Flow pin right here. Another one of his emotes. Kreef actually made all three of these emotes, which is pretty sick. Um, so that is available. Oh, also, yeah, so Chef Patch, Flow Flow Patch. These are all patches and pins from play playtesters who contributed a lot to the development of the game during the playtest, and super cool to see. See, we, we also have Big Weave. Shout out to Big Weave, the guy that got, or that invited Nico and I to the initial playtest and put us on game. There's Big Weave right there with the, and Big Weave patch. You, you can see these in game, but since I'm playing solo, you can't, really can't. There's Anthran. I'm just gonna redeem all of them and then blank or blank sheet of paper and mice for mice run fast. So for anyone that's playing the demo or will get the game, these will all be in the demo and in the base game. You can get a bunch of patches, pins, etc. And there will be more patches and pins that can be earned through gameplay later on. But for now, you can have these early supporter ones. Okay, let's actually play. It looks like. Yeah, we can only play... So, for the demo, we can play with one or two players, solo or duo. There's the endless mode, but in the final release, there will also be a nightmare mode, with escape mode coming out later. Friends, public, invite. Okay. Oh, and look, there's actually game mode descriptions now. So, for this game, we're supposed to scavenge for supplies, sell them for cash, and pay off your ever-growing debt. We also have to beware, be wary of random events, or that will throw twists your way. Now, if you sit and listen to the intro cutscene, this will be explained to you. But just in case you missed it or weren't paying attention, you can read it here instead. But yeah, we're gonna go. I'm gonna go play this demo. Sipping the Celsi? Yes, sir. I gotta be awake for this. Finally, I'm back inside of this train. It's been so long. Let's see, do we. Do we have any... Oh, well, I guess they don't have the train uh, thing here because they added it to the beginning of the game now. Feels good to be an American again. Let's see. Full version only. I think we're only going to be able to go to the metro this time, which is fine. This is the map that you're going to want to get used to anyway. Because even in base game, you'll want to go to metro first for the most part. But... The base game, the full game that releases in a week will also have the hotel, hospital, and tunnels available. And yeah. 
for people who, since we didn't get to watch the cutscene, I'll go over the way this game works. You have to pay off your debt amount, which is right here. This is how many days you have to pay it off. And you go to these maps to go scavenge for scrap, loot, etc. to help pay it off. Uh, eventually you can buy stuff that will help you on your journey. I wonder if this, these aren't the new prices, are they? This is probably just demo prices. These are very inexpensive compared to the base game, but maybe these were modified since you can only go to Metro and Metro doesn't have the craziest loot amount. And uh, yeah. But rather than just talking about it, let's go play. It's been so long. Okay. We spawn into the metro, which is the beginner map. There's a vent there. So all I've been told that all the enemies that are supposed to be here are in the game, and we'll encounter them as we go. Oh my goodness, all right. Oh, wait, I forgot, I don't have my... I probably should set my stuff here. Because controls... Crouch is on C. I'll put that to left control. And... Oh, it's push to talk by default, that's fine. I've been told that Sky's uh, personal best is 240 on one day, so we're going to try to beat 240, I guess. <laughs> we're also going to see how how well we can do here on Metro. In the playtest, you know, about like a 500 day on Metro is kind of stellar. But at the same time, when I did solo Metro, I didn't go too far because I only did Metro well enough to buy equipment, to buy a starting loadout. Um... The environment is a little dark, but I am a little bit used to the tiles at this point. So the intended way of play is to buy a flashlight or a lantern, so that way you can see easier on future runs. Okay, there's something kicking a door down, which... And since I'm playing solo, that means it's an enemy. It's over to my right, though. I'll know if an enemy is nearby if, I, if my character starts breathing. There's a mechanic where your character starts breathing if you are within... A certain range of enemies. But even though I can hear the door getting kicked out. Okay. I'm still somewhat safe. I think. But I'm starting to hear some ambient sounds that I'm not used to hearing. So I'm. I think it's that TV right there. Wait, maybe. Shoot, maybe. It, there we go. There's a breathing noise. The butcher was a lot closer than I thought. So I don't I don't know what the detection range is anymore. Yeah, he's just right there. That detection range was a lot closer than before. That or I've just been so used to walking fast or something. I don't know if he's going to keep going that way. But the days are longer now. Look, it's oh, it's only about to be 10 a.m. The train won't leave until midnight, so I have some time. Okay. Are these just ambient sounds that I ignored before or something? These ambient sounds are going kind of crazy. Well, that just looks like a loot room. He might come back. Start walking with him. Yeah, it, if you think an enemy is nearby, start crouching. Because even when you're walking, you can still... Enemies can still hear you. And on my based on my experiences, if you are questioning whether or not an enemy can hear you, you might as well just start crouching. Because it is very likely that they can. It is, it is more likely that they hear you than you hear them. That's why I'm playing a little slow right now. But not entirely, like the butcher should, like if that room is deeper, he should keep going. But if it's not, he's going to come back at some point. Now, looting stuff doesn't make noise, opening loot cabinets and stuff doesn't make noise, but opening doors does. So, I don't have to open that door, so I'm just going to kind of walk here. Keep on walking. Looks like we have a double loot room set up. I'd love to see it. This door's 
open. So that's where the butcher came from. And usually where enemies tend to come from progress. Progress being a deeper part of the map. Because they're the the maps are procedurally generated. And as procedurally generated maps go, some some paths tend to lead to dead ends. But the maps in Forsaken Frontiers are huge. And if you can find a way where enemies came from and get behind them somehow, you are basically guaranteed to go to deeper parts of the map. And deeper parts of the map mean more loot and also more chances of getting crap. Also, this is the door that I, was, I heard getting kicked down a little while ago, which is like a couple floors away. See, look, that's a kick door option. You can kick it, but it makes a lot of noise. So I don't think I'm going to. The butcher didn't have to kick that door down, so I think, yes. Butcher is up there somewhere, which means I think he's going back. Now, I don't know if, I don't think the, the butcher can hear proximity chat. It might just be a spider specific tech. I'm kind of hoping it is. Now, an issue, the one thing that, or I'll get detected really by doing this is if I come across a shambler, which, which are the peg leg looking dudes. Because he will scream, if I, if he sees me, he will scream and notify other enemies in my position. The enemies do have to be nearby to, to hear, to hear the shambler in order to come to him. But that's where I will have to start running for the most part. But if you just kind of play like this, you'll be able to, um, go pretty far in this game. Okay, nothing in those, but it's fine. We should get some stuff here. There's also stuff here. I just hope that the butcher doesn't come back this way. Because if he starts coming back this way, he'll be behind me, and that's how I get back to the train. Otherwise, I'm mostly looking for an elevator, hopefully. How's it going, Cosmo? Uh-oh. Spider nearby. Spider won't hear me though unless I'm walking. Oh, butcher room. Okay, so this is where the butcher spawned. These are tend to be really good for loot. And you are, as last I checked, you are safe on this side of the map, or of this side of the room to collect scrap. But if you go on the other side, that hooked shambler there will scream and notify everyone of your existence. You can't grab scrap from this side, but there's so much scrap there that depending on where you are in your run, it might be worth going for. But I think since, you know, I'm just gonna kind of crouch past. Uh-oh. Okay. I'm gonna have to do some prep here. Uh-oh. Wait, this isn't good. Where's he kicking from? Hopefully he's kicking the door behind me. Yeah, he is. He is. This is good. This is super good. Now I'm going to be behind the butcher and the spider. As long as he doesn't walk into me. Uh-oh. Oh god! That's not good at all. That's actually the opposite of what I want. Okay, we gotta run. We gotta make distance. Locked, locked. Please don't be a dead end. Actually, it shouldn't be. Locked doors, just some- oh god. Okay, this is real bad. So now I have to kick a door down. Oh, it's also 6 p.m. Dead end door also. Hmm. Uh oh. Ouch. No, I can't hide under either of these. I can't hide under these. Oh, he's gonna see me though. Surely he saw me. No, he didn't see me. Okay. If the 
If the enemies see you hide, then they can get you. I have 259 right now. The problem is, I think I have... I'm stuck in a dead end here? No, the real problem is that... I'm stuck here behind the butcher. I have to kind of wait for him to calm down, though. Surely one of these doors is progress, though. Hopefully. I also kicked... Di there aren't really any doors for me to work with, either. Or desks. I might double check this room over here to see... Oh, there's a door right there, actually. This might not have been a dead end, so I'm gonna double check. But I have to start considering how I'm gonna get back. Now, I am injured, so I'm a bit slower. Also, Ventress can now pop. Ventress spawns at the Metro starting at 5 p.m. So now making noise is a lot more dangerous than normal. No, this was absolutely just a dead end. This was the fire exit. But I assumed that this middle door was also a dead end, which might have been a fatal mistake. Oh, wait. It's a blackout also? Or am I just in a dark hallway? Wait, if it's blackout, I have to go all the way back. Forward is not an option. Oh no, I'm just in a dark hallway, thank goodness. Okay. It's a spider. I can always hear their voices long before breathing range. Yeah, so you can normally hear them before breathing range. That's why the breath mechanic I haven't used all too much, because I tend to hear them long before I, I have the breath mechanic. Also, in the playtest, I was running a lot more, and you have to, um, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to differentiate between the running breath and the, uh, oh shit, okay. <laughs> Alright, that's, that's a, that's a classic, that's a banger. Haven't done that in a while. Haven't done that in a while. But you know... Okay, hold on. I have to reset. I have to change this. For people that don't want the radio too loud but still want to play it. That also happened to me. It is what it is. It's classic Metro. Classic Metro. Um, there is a light above it to help you see better. In the first playtest that I played in, it was super dark and it was just very common to fall in. It's still gonna be very common to fall in. But honestly, I should know better, but it was a, it was a tense situation. There was gonna be Spider and Butcher right behind me. And I just had to run. I had to look for an elevator. Just very unfortunate tile to be behind that locked door. But anyway, I like how they did this here. They only gave you enough money to afford the first trip to the Metro, and this introduces the concept of going into debt to go to maps for a potentially higher loot. So since I can't afford to go to the metro, I can still go there, but I will inherit I will inherit a debt of $3,500 to go there. I mean, $3,500 for a $10 travel fee sounds like a lot, but the thing is when it comes to the debt amounts, uh, you ac they actually added two zeros to this. So instead of $3,500 of debt, I'm really only getting $35. Because the scrap you collect will only be worth a certain amount, but as far as the debt goes, you add two zeros to it. I probably should have explained that at the beginning, but yeah. So for borrowing $10, I will go into debt for $35. A 350% interest rate is insane, but in the ap apocalypse, anything goes. Another thing as well, since I died, dying also increases your debt by $30 or $3,000 for debt amount. That's why my new debt is $1,300 or $13,000. So now that I go to the Metro, I will also incur another $3,500. So my debt amount will be $16,500. So in order to pay off my debt, I'll need $165 rather than the initial $100. And this is why if you're in debt, you should stay on top of it and just pay it off immediately because, you know, your debt can get crazy without 
without you knowing, you know? Um, as far as this goes down here, remaining value, it went down from 100 to 82%, which means that there's 82% of the regular loot density on Metro. So that's to prevent people from just going to one map over and over again. It's to incentivize people to go to different maps. So, uh, I mean, in this case, we'll see if it makes a big that much of a difference here. Try walking more. Cer fairly certain. It seems very quiet now. Word. I'll, I'll have, the real test is whether or not I'm walking near a spider or not. Because walking would get me killed by spiders. But walking tends to be pretty safe. It's just that crouching is very safe. Like, extremely safe. Like for full release? Me too, me too. Finance, bro. Uh, finance if you're in the industry. Okay. Maybe we'll buy equipment. Doesn't seem likely. I'm breathing already, by the way. Oh, maybe it's because I was running during during the intro scene. Now I'm gonna see if I can get some cheeky loot in here. Dep sometimes, depending on the the spawn, I might get stuff here. Oh, fighter immediately. That's unlucky. Now, uh, enemies kicking down doors does not alert other enemies. It's only when a player does it. Which is nice. Because it would be kind of... It would kind of suck if... Because of an enemy pathing, it kicks a locked door and brings everyone to you. Like, not really your fault or anything that's in your control. And that would make things a lot more RNG-based, which I don't think is what, you know, the, the dev team is going for. But I'm, I'm glad that they did that. That also includes security doors on, on hospital too. So sometimes when when you see uh, an enemy starting to kick down a security door, it's a good thing. Because now you can get the loot from that security room without the same dangers of doing it. Now I'm curious why. Yeah, see look, that aggroed him. Opening that door aggroed him. It might, I hope it doesn't kill me though. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Even something as simple as opening a door like that is dangerous. I think I'm gonna go this way, because the spider was over here. I had a surprise he... Wait, is this a gap? It is a gap. Uh-oh. Enemies can just walk over gaps. It's just a thing. Get used to it. It's like how in Lethal Company, you know? and They just kind of cross gaps. What's this game about? This game is about post-apocalyptic America and you have to pay off your debt. So I'm going to different maps to do that. And as far as the lore behind that, that's something that we're going to most likely learn after full release when uh, they start adding in lore drops about the game. So it's a very similar gameplay loop to Lethal Company in that respect. Um, But I like this one. I got I got the I had the privilege to play in the playtest for this game and twice, twice by the way. And enjoyed every single second of it to the point where um you know I normally only stream like three or four hours. I was regularly streaming eleven, twelve hours a day for that. And I I was just gaming. The demo is available on Steam right now, though, so if you want to play it for yourself, you can. It is limited, but as far as I can tell right now, it's basically the full Metro experience. Based on a Chicago train station, pretty accurate. <laughs> I think it is, um, I think this one actually does take place in Chicago, if I remember correctly. Because it shows the location. Um, I think it's Chicago, Illinois for Metro. Where's the Austin discount code? There's no Austin discount code. I actually asked Maylene, somewhat in jest, if I could have a Chef Austin code that makes people pay more than the price. That, was all, that would have always been my model if I ever get a code. Because to me it doesn't make sense like for people to use a code and get a discount if if a cut is also going to me because now the, the developer is 
earning less off rip because they're getting they're selling at a discounted price plus they have to pay me a cut how about let's see who the real supporters are offer offer the game at an even higher price with my code and then i just make the difference off the full price <laughs> I think that that's like a, a model that I would unironically pursue. Because if if I can't convince people to buy it at the higher price, they, then they can either just go buy, buy it at full price, regularly, or or my mar or I can just market myself so well or grow my brand so well that people will buy it regardless of the price increase, or they'll buy it for the meme, you know. Forsaken takes place in present-day Chicago. This is what Chicago was like in 1992. So, uh, Chicago has gotten better or worse since then, you tell me. I am gonna crouch, though, because the spider has insane hearing range. Like, I'm not even com I'm com I'm not sure if it'll hear this. This room isn't even worth opening, usually. This is- you use this room if- if you need, like, a- if you need to stun an enemy. That's about what that's useful for. There's usually only like one or two scrap pieces in there, and that's if you're lucky. Now, I didn't get a chance to find one last game, but instead of going all the way back to the train to secure my loot, I can also keep going forward and try to find an elevator. That's like this game's alternate escape. And if you find an elevator, it will take you all the way back to the train station, which is nice. Um, and as you've noticed, I've been looting quite a bit as well. There's no limit to how much scrap or loot that you can pick up. There's only a limit to how much store equipment you can bring into the game, and that's something nice as well. So there shouldn't be a lot of backtracking in your playthroughs for this game, which I thoroughly enjoy. They, they made the game so that they encourage you to keep going deeper and deeper into the map rather than trying to hover nearby and have to worry about making it back in time. In, like, every way that they could, um, feasibly come up with. Without it getting, like, ridiculous. Can't wait for the microtransactions. They have zero interest in at, uh, making microtransactions. And last I checked, they're just gonna keep adding stuff to the game without, like, charging for DLC. I, I believe that's the full vision for it. Because they themselves don't even like microtransactions as gamers. So why would they put it in their game? I think that's base as hell. Which is why, one of one of the reasons why, like, if I ever had a code that made people pay more, I would, <laughs> that's what I would want. Because you're gonna, already going to get so much just on release, and they're just going to keep adding stuff at no extra cost. That's insane to me. Especially when the meta right now is free or... Uh, affordable games that eventually add microtransactions since people will pay <laughs> since people will pay them not even the cosmetics man like like okay wait i'm in trouble here because spiders walk a little bit faster than the player model last i checked i think the spider is coming this way i can't really tell um i'm also in a dead end start walking back Oh wait, no, he's in a room over to my left, so I'm okay. But this spider can absolutely hear me walking, I'm pretty sure. Hopefully they add different skins. They plan to. The priority has been making sure that the game itself is playable first. And addressing whatever bugs come up from, uh, from the release. But cosmetics are absolutely, like, in the pipeline. And, yeah. Which is crazy to me that there won't be microtransactions for those two. Now, there might, they might be put behind certain challenges, which I think is a cool way to do it. At least, I've been told, like, there's gonna be patches and pins for unlocking achievements and stuff. Or pins, rather, pins. But that's a cool way to do it, you know, just old, very old school. Oh look, I found an elevator. I might just take it for proof of concept. But we're gonna see how far we can go for... Can't complete... Completely can't hear their sounds? Oh, dang.
Wait, is it... Is my sound, like, audio not high enough on my stream? It's also, it's, it's also just very low on my end, too. Never been an OG in a popular video game, this has to be it. Dude, I have my fingers crossed that this is it. I think Forsaken Frontiers will have appeal for, like, pretty much anyone who will, who actually decides to sit down and play it. That's the hard part, getting people to actually play it. I also think a lot of people are going to get stomped off of it, because this isn't an easy game, you know? And it was never intended to be easy either, which it, which is something I respect as well. Oh, uh, also, I think there's a battery life on this now too. There's a, a battery life on this door. Because Maylene saw me abusing this in nightmare mode during the playtest and said, nah, that's not, I'm not gonna allow that. <laughs> Interesting. It sounds like Jokey and Faye can hear them fine. Yeah, oh, dang, that opened pretty fast, actually. Good. Anyway, I got 230 here. Which is enough to pay off the debt. But here's how selling works. If you want to sell, you can deposit your scrap here. And this is the amount of the percentage that you'll sell it for. I'm going to do it for proof of concept and also because uh, the store items are on sale for, for the demo, which is kind of nice, actually. Because I, I remember playtesting thinking, dang, or at least solo, it felt like the equipment was expensive. But then when we were playing in a group, buying equipment was no problem because we were just earning at an insane amount. But anyway, yeah, it's kind of nice too because when you put your scrap in here, it'll show you how much you're actually getting back. So 70% of 230 is 161. You don't have to pull out a calculator for that. Unless you're doing some sort of challenge run. Because once you put scrap in here, it's committed. It's completely out of your backpack. You can't take it back out. But, you know, at the same time, you might as well put it in here, because if you go out and die in the field... Okay, for solo, if you die, you lose all the scrap that's in here and in here anyway. The only money that you don't lose is money that's right here, so I'm gonna sell this. So this, if now if I die, this 161 is locked in. This will not go down if you die. If your squad wipes, however, you lose all of this, you lose all of this, and sometimes people will get upset. But in multiplayer also, if you lose this stuff, you will drop a backpack out there and people can get it for you. Or if you had already put it in here, as long as someone survives, you get to save all of this, which is nice. Solo though, I'm selling to have this. I have $161. I no longer have to incur additional debt to go to the Metro. And my debt amount will stay at 16500 Now, I am $4 short from paying this off. Cause you know, I, this is actually 165, but I have 161. Warning. No. Unauthorized movement within the metro system will not be tolerated. Stay within designated areas, and remember that your continued cooperation is essential for the safety and stability of our operations. Oh. We are monitoring all activities, and your actions will have consequences. Okay, so that's new also. Uh, sometimes the, the train, or there'll be a voice that tells you stuff. I forget what the exact wording was, but though those will actually give insight into what's going on here and some lore drops will happen through that as well. Video game marketing just does itself does itself after one first famous person plays. Exactly, right? Uh, I I think that's kind of what they're going for, you know, because there hasn't been too much marketing as uh, from like the developer side of things. It's mostly just been hoping to like, you know, make the game good and then put it into like people's hands so people see the see the game for what it is and as long as your game is good and someone big plays it people will go and play it for themselves and especially a multiplayer game that you can play with up to 12 people horror game proximity voice chat that's just a good formula and it when it's good a good it has to be a good game on top of that though because there are a lot of multiplayer proximity chat games that aren't very good and that aren't in people's regular gameplay rotations you know and I think this has that, I think this has that sauce that can do it, so long as people play it. Hello, Phoenixian. Lucian said to follow, so I'm here. Welcome in, welcome in. I'm a big fan of that guy. <laughs> Hoping he gets to play this game as well. 
If you put your scrap in the box without selling it, will it still be in the box next time you come back to maybe sell for a higher price next day? Yes. So you don't have to sell it exactly. So you can leave it in here and wait for a higher day. You're just risking that if you wipe, this will go away. But that's kind of what we did because what you do by putting it in here is that you can, especially in a group, you can go out and you won't risk carrying your bag out there and losing it out there instead. But you do have to put it in here before launching for the next day because if i had launched before putting my money in here then i'm committed to holding my bag until i leave again so if you want to put your money in here do it in the in-between don't do it during the day because you can't now i did say i need 165 dollars i'm four dollars short i i could just go out and get four dollars and come back but since you can't really complete a full quota in the playtest i'm just gonna buy stuff uh, Bolt cutters are on sale for 60. I think I'm gonna buy bolt cutters and an adrenaline because that'll be the best showcase of stuff. So when you buy stuff, you can go through all the store items here. And then, yeah, it'll open right there. Bolt cutters let me open up locked doors without kicking them. So that is super useful because not only does it uh, not attract enemies that way, but you also have a usable door for door slamming. Normally when you kick down a door, you can't door slam anymore, so that's not, like, very great. But it's something you have to do sometimes until you get a bolt cutter. Adrenaline, what adrenaline does, it has two functions. The first one is, if you use it while you're up, it gives you infinite stamina for a period of time. So if you're running and you run out of stamina, you can use this to extend your run for a little bit. Or, if you go down, you can pick yourself back up from the down state which is super valuable because if you go out on your own and there's no one to find you, you might be down for a while or there's no hope of getting yourself back up, which uh, not only means that whatever scrap you had will never be recovered, but it also means that you might just be lying on the ground for the rest of the day or have to give up and die. And in solo, like if you go down in solo, your run's basically over unless you're holding an adrenaline. Adrenaline is going to be very meta for solo players because this will be the only way you can recover from the down state in solo. So very good to have, very good to have. This is too much for my tiny brain. <laughs> you know, it, it seems like a simple game on the surface. And when you play it without knowing all these little things, it might seem like everything is super strong. But once you realize what options you have available to you, you start to realize that there is a real game to be played here. And it starts to get real exciting. Now, the one thing I didn't take into account is the fact that I'd be going into more debt by buying this stuff. Because now I don't have enough money to go to the metro. So I'll be accumulating another $31.50 worth of debt. Which means my final debt amount for this playtest will be uh, 19650 So I'll effectively have to make $200 worth of scrap here on this day even though there will be a remaining loot value of 67%. So at almost half loot density, I'm going to have to perform better than I did on the last two days. But I do have a bolt cutter and adrenaline, so we're going to see if that makes a big difference for the run. Let's do it. 280. Okay. It is dark. Please don't fall into a hole. Walk until otherwise specified. I'm not going to run. I, I like running more in multiplayer. But the thing is, the days are so long that you can still cover a lot of ground just by walking. You will cover more ground walking than crouching, because crouching is slower than just walking. So I will walk until I hear something that tells me not to. It's a bit of a linear path gonna right hug here there's a vent i said that on the first day been walking non-stop yeah I, <laughs> I i only walk until i'm until i have a reason not to the reason why i'm not gonna run is because sometimes i make so much noise running that i can't or i'm not really paying attention to what i'm hearing and that can be fatal for a run and as, while I do enjoy the like the aggressive playstyle that's available in this game, it's not entirely the best to do always for solo. The aggressive playstyle is good to know, so that way you can reset back to this. I'm also I, I think I said I was right hugging already. 
I'm barely waking up. The Celsius kicking in, so the yapping's about to go insane. I consider not drinking a Celsius for this session since it's already so late. And committing to the Celsius means that I am going to be up for a while. But you know, I have a lot of editing to do. I got some Dead by Daylight to play, eventually. If Nico's around, I'll probably duo this demo with him after this. I'm sure Nico will want to play, and he should be off work now. And um, Yeah, even though you can only play three days on this demo, like, you basically get the full Metro experience anyway, so you get to play one map entirely for free with a friend. Like, why wouldn't I be here? I had no problem playing Metro only during the playtest. I will have no problem playing Metro only until full release. We can tr kind of try to see how much money we can get in just the three days or even just in one day. There's a lot you can do if you can get a little creative with it. Walk walking in Forsaken while walking on a walk pad. <laughs> the one thing Forsaken Frontiers doesn't have yet and probably ever is controller support. If the, if the game get, gets controller support, it's be, it'll probably be because I push it or the community pushes for it really hard, but it's not really a priority. Which is fine. But I do think that this would be pretty conducive to controllers. But with the amount of looting that I'm gonna do, I do, I feel like it's definitely better to loot or to play mouse and key for this. Because even in Lethal Company, I was having trouble precisely looting stuff, and there is a lot less loot to be looted, uh, scrap to be collected in Lethal Company than there is in Forsaken Frontiers. So a lot of a lot of this fast movement probably wouldn't be very possible on controller, but it would be a lot more chill and a bit more accessible for some people too. I'd be able to get the walking pad. Oh, you know what? I did say that I would get a standing desk attachment for my desk so I could do walking pa or walking pad Forsaken. So that's an option. I'm gonna run a little bit now. Since I'm backtracking, you know, should be fine. This didn't, I didn't backtrack all the way, did I? No, I don't think so. I right hugged, so now I have to go all the way back to where I, I wasn't right hugging. Now that I, it's, I haven't mentioned this yet, but there's almost no heads up display in this game. Other, there is no heads up display other than this crosshair. All the info is on this data deck right here, and in the in the game itself, like st you do have a limit, you do have limited stamina in this game, but you can gauge it based on how heavily your character is breathing. Instead, which is a neat little feature. This is where the right hug, left hug comes into play. I know that I'm going down paths that I haven't checked yet. What do you think of navigating in FF? Significantly harder to remember where you came from and get out without an elevator. Yeah, so because of how deep you have to go sometimes, it can be hard to, to navigate and easy to lose track. That's why the right hugging, or it's, that's why sometimes I just try to commit down one lane, or this is where right hugging, left hugging really comes into play too. Because if you do come into a dead end, you will have thanked yourself for right hugging. I can't tell if that was the butcher or not. But you'll thank yourself for right hugging or left hugging because you can find your next route very well. The other alternative is that you just get lucky with your the path that you take and you'll never even have to consider it because you can just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper without ever having to worry about left hug, right hug strats. My preferred way is to just do that. Just kind of commit to one path and hope it doesn't uh, become a dead end, but that's a strategy I employ more in group lobbies, but for solo, I'm pretty um, I stick pretty religiously to a right hug or a left hug depending on what I see So that way I can always make progress and when I don't have a lock picker Or when I don't have a bolt cutter, what the heck? I try not to uh, kick down doors I just kind of leave them be and then go a different way because it's not worth attracting enemies to you in solo play. But since I have bolt cutters, you know, I can I can just go through locked doors instead.
But I never try to go back to the train. Like, that's not a thing that I'm gonna do in solo. I'm just always- I, I thought those were Bracken eyes. I'm playing the wrong game. I'm just always hoping that I random into an elevator. You can buy a pager to help you find an elevator. Um... Because the pager will beep if you're on the same elevation as an elevator, and it'll start beeping faster the closer you get to it. The only thing is, like, the pager will- the sound of the pager will also attract enemies, and I don't think that's really worth it. And I don't think- I'm not really playing for an elevator until the very end of the game. So I guess if I- I can save the pager until the very end and see what happens. But yeah, see, I- I'm now at the end of my rope here, so I'm gonna go back and continue my right hug. This is the only time I'll backtrack, really. But being able to navigate this will really put your navigation skills to the test. Uh oh. There's a door being kicked down somewhere. And I don't recall there ever being locked doors. So I think wherever I'm going now is going to be where that door is, but I kind of hope it isn't. But I also haven't found any enemies, so... And since I've hit dead ends, that means progress is not where I've checked yet. But maybe not. Maybe there's progress this way. This looks like a dead end. Yeah. It is what it is. We keep going back. Breathing. I think there might be an enemy- oh god. Wait, maybe... Maybe we... Do we have to... Uh-oh. Oh no! Oh no! Please! Oh! Please have enough. I don't have enough. Let's see if this works. Okay, we're gonna have to go out there and left hug. Oh, don't kill me. Okay, she fixed that. She fixed that. It's good to know. <laughs> no, no table cheese. We had to figure that out. But yeah. <laughs> this, this is normally where you would pay off your debts. Um, and if you don't have enough to pay off your debt, something else happens, which I won't say here. People who've been around know what happens. But for people who don't, you'll just have to go play the game on October 21st, or go watch one of my VODs. But yeah, full game releases in one week from now, which is the full game here. Join the Discord, I guess it, the buttons all work here. Nice. But yeah. Cool. Forsaken Frontiers, Forsaken Frontiers. Alright, well, Nico didn't immediately answer me, so... Okay, here's the goal. Try to get more than 240 in one day. Try to get over a thousand in one go. I think for in order for that to do that, I'm gonna have to really perform here on day one. Oh look, this all right. Best RNG you can get in the game: a door kick on solo gameplay, which is um oh double door kick. This is actually the, probably the worst spawn I could have gotten. But that gave me a lot of info. It means that enemies are not... I heard the spider, I think. Maybe. I'm surprised that didn't attract anybody. That should have for sure brought enemies to me. But I'll take it. Are these all locked doors? Maylene's trolling me. <laughs> Alien found my IP and gave me all locked doors on Metro. Okay. Just kidding. There's actually an unlocked door right there. But we're gonna stick to the right hug. I've become a bit of a right hugger after playing with Nico. So... I'm going to stick to that as much as I can. There's a locked door here, so if an enemy starts to aggro, I'll have some time to hide. There's a hiding desk right there. You can't hide under these desks that have a single drawer going all the way across. But you can hide under these desks that have a little cubby next to it. Like you can go under there, you can go under there. You're safe from enemies so long as they don't see you go under here. I don't think they can see you through these windows, 
So you, I, otherwise the butcher would have found me last run. So I think it's safe to assume that this is just a, a wall. Now I'm not going to kick this because I hear the spider la like doing his grunting noises or whatever. So we're going to move on. There, I'm going to go to that open door. Again, I don't have bolt cutters. I'm solo. I already had to kick down two doors and I didn't really like that. I'm fortunate that nothing aggroed on me, but I'm pretty sure the enemies are going to be this way. I heard a door getting kicked down somewhere. But it must be somewhat far. It looks like progress is going to be more to my... I don't, I don't know, actually. But when you're left hugging, right hugging, you don't really have to think too hard. You just keep holding one wall until you hit a dead end, then you hold the opposite wall on the way back. Which I'm probably going to have to do already. 77. This is... I'm not kicking this because it's just a closet. There wasn't another path, right? Yeah, because this is just where I came from. Yeah. So I will have to go through that other kicked door, it seems. Or through that other locked door. No, wait, no, th that's also a closet. No, it's this one right here. I'm gonna kick this and then hide. This is a vending machine that you can hide in. Okay, nothing. You can kind of stress test your environment by kicking once. And if there's an enemy nearby, they'll hear that and kick it down for you. And you can just be hidden before they do. But if no one shows up, then there's probably no one nearby. There's a hole right here. Yep. It's supposed to be lit up so you can see. Okay. But it's still very hard to see. I was ready this time. Dead end. That's kind of rare, but I'll... Fine. Rare as in I haven't seen it before. Okay, there's a loot room in front, which is nice. This is a big old loot room. Sweet. Nothing on the left over there. I might just commit forward to the loot room, honestly. I'm breaking the left hug, right hug here for this. Just in case like a shambler comes by, I'll at least have looted this room before that time, before that happens. Grab these. Yeah, certain tiles will be a lot more loot dense than others, so I get excited, more excited to see certain ones over others too. This might be a dead end also, so it might be okay that I cleared this. We'll see. Otherwise... Otherwise I'll go back. Yeah, I hear the spider that way. There's a fire exit there. Fire exit means that you're going to change elevation. Another jump? The spider was nerfed, so even though I was hearing the spider breathing, it might not have heard me run there. But see, even though I broke off from the left hug, right hug, I, I still found progress somewhere else. This looks like a dead end. It is not a dead end, actually. Whoa. There's an elevator on the opposite end. I'm going to go open that real quick. It's nice to, if you see an elevator, just open it. Uh-oh. I'm Shambler for sure. In case you're in danger. Loot room. We can just hide from him for a second. I think I have a lot of time still. Yeah, it's only two o'clock. We'll see. We'll wait to see where he goes. They're also going to see if that attracted anything too. So far, I've fallen in every hole I've come across. That is, I've been saying from the very first time I fell in that hole, that people will fall in that hole and it'll be part of the Metro experience. Whether or not that should be on the first map that people play on is a whole other thing. But it it is like, it is one of those like, you know, initiations into the, into the game too. 
it's telling you right away that this is not supposed to be an easy game. Which is, I think, an opposite approach to Lethal Company, right? Because Lethal Company, you have experimentation. It's a very safe moon. You can kind of just safely loot everything. Have a little scare here or there, which you learn later on isn't that big of a deal. Like, hoarding bugs and slimes and snare fleas are really, like, the least of your problems. And it becomes progressively harder and scarier. But this game is just difficult off-rip. And the different maps pre present different challenges right away. That is not how experimentation is with my RNG. <laughs> uh, experimentation... Well, yeah, I, I believe that, actually. Experimentation can sometimes be dangerous, for sure. Like, you know, some people just get consistently get thumpers, uh, brackens, etc. I personally struggle with spiders for some reason. The power indoor power level of 4 does make things a little bit easier, though. But now in like current version, Lethal Company, you can also get old birds and giants outside, which isn't very cool. The double old bird outside is crazy, too. Crazy work. Experimentation having an outdoor level of 8 is really funny. That's like a higher pow uh, power level than uh, Rand, Dine, and Titan, I think. Ah, dead end. 232. So I need nine more dollars to beat Sky score, but I need a lot more dollars to be on pace for a thousand. Hopefully the Chambler kept walking away from me, or else I'm about to get spotted again. 234. 6 o'clock, Ventress can now spawn. Ventress is alive in this version of the game. 237. How did I miss these crap items? That's crazy. I'm gonna walk now. Nope. Oh. Pretty sure elevator is that way. Hotel seems much more beginner friendly. It Hotel is definitely lit better. But I, I find the um the hall Oh well actually with all the doors and stuff, hotel becomes a lot safer once you start learning how to door slam. I like hotel for that aspect. It has like the most door slammable loops out of all the maps. Metro is not quite the most straightforward to survive. There are some loops here though, but I mean, I don't think looping is something that comes, uh, or that's very intuitive. 254. I might just lock that in. Yeah, I think I'm gonna lock that in. Because now if a Ventress pops on me with the spider, my odds of survival are a lot lower. I, like you can loop this on Metro, but this this isn't the easiest loop. It's a little bit easier because there's a trash can there Hopefully I don't walk into the spider here See like oh wait, no, maybe it always has a trash can Okay, please let me get to the elevator I think I get there. If I remember correctly, the elevator is right here on the right. Don't listen to the exit signs, they don't always point to exits. Yeah, it looks like we'll secure this 250. Oh! Sweet. Okay, um, pro tip, when exiting the fire exit elevator, or the fire exit elevator, when exiting the elevator, make sure that you're crouched in case there are any enemies nearby. It sounds like there's a spider in here. 
Maybe he's just directly above. Yeah, 10 o'clock. Um, so the first alarm will sound at 6 p.m. And then every two hours after that, so 6 p.m., 8 p.m., 10 p.m., uh, the horn will sound off to let you know what time it is. And also it'll sound off faster with each iteration to let you know it's even later in the day. And those train blares are also directional, so if for some reason you can't find the elevator, you can start running back towards the sound of the train horn, and you'll eventually find your way back. It also starts sounding off around, like, after 11. I'm not entirely sure what hour, since I haven't ran back to the elevator too much, but it'll just be a constant blaring sound until midnight as well, to kind of signify that you are running out of time. But if the train leaves without you, you die, so try not to let the train leave without you. I have 254 here. I'll drop it. I'll drop it for now. I'm not gonna. S Maybe I do sell it. 152. I can sell it just so I don't get in more debt. I could also just pay off the debt immediately. What happens if I pay off the debt? I'm gonna try that real quick. Just to see what happens. I don't think you're supposed to be able to. Oh, okay. So, normally when you go pay off your debt, you type stuff in here. But they just completely disabled this. So that's fine. But like I said before, you take away two zeros from the debt amount to see how much you actually have to earn. So I only have to pay off 100. I have 152. So in the base game, I would have been able to pay this off. But I can't here. Medkit is on sale. Bolt, bolt cutters. I, I can't buy bolt cutters and adrenaline, unfortunately. I think the play here... I'm still gonna buy Adrenaline because this is like the most valuable item for solo play. And the fact that it's so cheap and I'll probably never see it so cheap again makes me want to buy it. I could buy a medkit because what will happen is I, if, when I pick myself up from the injured state with an Adrenaline, uh, I only pick myself back up to injured. And when you're injured, you are slower than you are when you're healthy. And while you can, still can outrun enemies, while injured, you can't outrun the Ventress, which tends to be the end of my runs while you're injured. So having the medkit makes it so that you can heal, heal yourself back up to full and outrun the Ventress. And also, you can take another chainsaw hit from the Butcher as well. Because the Butcher won't insta-down you when he hits you, he'll put you in the injured state. So if you're able to get hit by the Butcher and escape him, you can go back to healthy and not get downed by the Butcher the next time you see him. The Spider will insta-down you no matter what your health state is, so this doesn't help that much. But um, medkit is good. And also, med if you can afford two adrenalines, you'll need a med kit to be able to pick put yourself back to healthy. I don't think you can go down from the injured state with an adrenaline and still be able to pick yourself back up. Because normally, um, normally you have to go back to healthy before you get downed again. Without so that when you go down the second time, you don't die. I've never tested that in solo, so maybe that'll be something I test eventually. But um, it's not something I'm going to test right now. I'm actually going to grab a. Well, Flashlight and Lantern are the same price. Uh, Lantern is nice for passive light because you can have it in your inventory and you'll still be lit up. Flashlight is better if you need to see far, but the thing is you need to wind the flashlight and winding the flashlight makes noise and can attract enemies. Normally though, the flashlight is cheaper than the Lantern, so I'm, I'm it's surprising for me to see that they are the same price here. But I'll take it. I'm gonna, well... If I'm going for, if the plan is to go for hot, like high earning, if the plan is to go to high earning, I shouldn't have bought anything to begin with, actually. So it's already too late for that. I'm just gonna buy a lantern just so we can see a little bit better. Do this. Hello. Melee and the lantern broke. Unless it doesn't work how, how I think it does? Or I can't- oh wait, I don't think you can use items here. Because people- what people were doing is that they were using their adrenalines while waiting to leave from the train. So it's just disabled for now. It'll, I'll be able to use it once I go to the metro. I once again made the same mistake of overbuying, so I'm gonna go into $28 of debt for this. But it's fine. I should be able to turn on the- lantern right here yeah we're good 
look at that lighting, that mood lighting. Big chillin'. Alright, immediate hide desk. Having a hiding desk next to the train is really nice. So that way, if, if stuff goes wrong towards the beginning, you know, you can de-aggro enemies and safely make your way back to the train. I think there's one in the in the room next to the train station also. But at least in the playtest, that room wasn't guaranteed to be like that. So it's not something that I've relied on in the past. Now there's a spider behind this door, I believe behind this kicked or this locked door so we'll see if he kicks that down eventually I'm cra I'm gonna start walking now let's see if it's fine I still I'm still so used to like the old spider ranges so I'm a little bit traumatized you know spiders kill me a lot in lethal company they kill me a lot more in this game though I'd say a lot of my deaths are thanks to the spider but at the same time you know there are Five enemies in in uh, Forsaken Frontiers, so you know the amount of times I die to each one are gonna be kind of high. Open this. Nice. Even at eighty one percent loot, this is pretty decent. Dead end. I love the loot collecting dopamine. Exactly. Exactly. Especially when you play in a group and you can just freely run everywhere. It's sick. I the way the best way I've put it so far is saying like the looting in this game is like the looting portion of a battle royale. I'm thinking of like Apex or whatever. You know when you drop in and you start collecting your gear as fast as you can. Except instead of turning into a firefight at the end of your looting session, you just keep looting. Or it turns into it turns into a horror game where you have to hide. Or you can play aggressively. That which is something I think Forsaken Frontiers does really well. Because usually in like horror games, you can only you can only hide, or it's really only viable to fight. But it's, it's both both approaches are viable in this game, which is really nice and very effective too. Like ones that I think hiding gets implemented not very well in a lot of things, and sometimes it just feels a little unfair. But I I feel like the hiding in this game, while it is it is somewhat difficult or maybe not intuitive. Um, it's very fair. Like, the fact that you can as long as you hide here and they don't see you, then you're good, is a cool thing. Um, they did make it a little bit... They did nerf it a little bit in the fact that spiders can hear you in proximity chat now. So if you get- if you get caught making a noise under the desk, I think enemies will still aggro onto you, and I think that's completely fair. But I don't think anywhere tells you that you can hide under these desks, which is why, like, I made that guide that I did. And, like, definitely door slamming is not a technique that people will know intuitively. Which is why, like, a role that I will- or something I will be doing, especially when the game fully releases, is putting out, uh, guides to all those techniques. Because I think people knowing that stuff will help enhance their play- play experiences a lot better. They don't even need to know looping. Like, even- like, you can loop this, which is more of an advanced thing. But I think with just hiding and door slamming, people can go a lot farther. Even just closing and locking the door can make people's play experiences a lot, you know, more... They can survive a lot more encounters just knowing those few things. Feels nice to just spam click everything right, right, right. Um... Okay, did, did he not kick this door down? I thought he would he would have kicked this. But where did he come from then? If, <laughs> If he didn't come from here, that must mean there's progress somewhere else. Oh, he came from up there. He kicked that door down. I remember now. But I am gonna walk towards him, actually. I just died outside the train with $180. Come back here to learn word. Uh, I have a YouTube video out showing, like, showcasing all the advanced techniques and stuff. 11 minute video and um so if you wanted something a bit more su succinct um that would be where to go and it's like the techniques i shared there still apply to the demo as well you've seen that word I, di I did feel like i put it out a little early but i was um i put it out right before the last play test oh wait i already went up here right no i didn't 
Because there's a locker right there. Or I just missed this locker when I came up here. No, I didn't come up here. And I'm... Or I did and I didn't fully clear it. Whatever. There's loot here. We're gonna loot. Currently at 103. I mean, loot's gonna be a little bit slower since there's a lower loot density. Oh, I did come up here. I just didn't fully loot, it seems. I don't know. It, it all starts to look the same at some point. Okay, I'm gonna start walking. I think it's safe now. But I'm surprised these doors aren't kicked down, because... Wait. Someone opened a door and it wasn't me. I think there's gonna be an enemy right here. Doors are opening. Hmm. Where? Got 352, let's go. Alright, new high score to beat around these parts is 352. Because now, now that it's available for public release, these are the scores that matter, right? Like, every score that we set in playtest was only available to, like, 12 people. But this is available to everyone at large. So even even now with the demo, this is the time to start learning and to start putting up some scores. And when full release drops, it's go time. I do have, I am kind of wait for this shambler to walk by. It's something that I didn't realize until I started playing more solo, but Shambler is like the run is the actual run killer. Cause you can play you can get behind the butcher, you can get behind the spider and be fine. You can get behind the Forsaken. But if the Shambler is still in front of you, that that thing will end your run. That thing will straight up end your run because it'll bring everyone that you went past. It'll bring them right back. Also, I'm scared. He went that way. Also, there are two shamblers. It is the only, like, it is the only enemy that has two, two spawns. At least in base game. So even if you get past one, that doesn't m mean you're not going to encounter one later. Actually, there's three. If you count the one that's in the butcher room. There's always one in the butcher room. But that one is a stationary enemy, so. And also, the butcher room isn't on every map. There's no butcher room on the hospital, so I guess there's not always three, but there's always at least two. And since the Shambler came from here, I'm going to come this way. Like I said, enemies tend to spawn from progress. So going behind the Shambler is really good. I'm also behind the Spider, which is fantastic. Which means the only enemies in front of me should be the Butcher and one more Shambler. That said, at 5pm, okay, now the Ventress can also be near me. I, n I don't know how the Ventress AI moves, but I do know when it spawns, and also when it's near me. See, look, there's a vent right there, so the Ventress can just theoretically pop from there. And actually, if, he, if she pops from there, I'm kind of screwed. I do have an Adrenaline, though, I think, right? Yeah, I do. I'm not going to kick that, because Ventresses are also aggroed by sound. So if I kick that, what usually happens in solo, I kick something, vent pops, and I'm screwed. But yeah. Those are the dangers I'm dealing with right now. I'm also running against time as well, since the first bell has gone off. Which means it's past 6 p.m. So I have a little under six hours to get find my way out of here. And you know, where where an elevator spawns is completely up to RNG. There there's no real way to like meta game your way into finding an elevator. You just have to keep going until you find one, or bring a pager. This might be a good time to bring a pager, but at the same time, a pager might just attract the Ventress to you. So if you're going to bring a pager, be ready to game. Be ready to find an elevator soon, but be ready to game as soon as that thing beeps. I'm not really a pager gamer. I am a hold W and pray gamer. It hasn't failed me so far. In the playtest, we even had elevator races to see who could find an elevator first, and I would win most of them without a pager. 
I say most of them as if I didn't just play with like two or three people, but elevator races are going to be fun to do. That's, some, that's something you can do in this game, actually. You can race your friend to see who can find an elevator first. You just load in and run to an elevator, and whoever finds the elevator first pulls the lever and leaves your friend behind. So that's a fun minigame you can do in the demo. Gambler is slow as heck. Even if you hide and avoid anything, he brings the first time. Some... True. Oh, I, the Ventress is near me. I hear her... I hear her breathing in the walls. So the next time I walk next to next to a vent, she will probably spawn in on me. Oh, okay. We might get our first Ventress of the of the demo. This is where knowing loops and door slamming will come into play. There's usually a vent right there, so I'm gonna be wary of that. I'm gonna have to walk past it though. Maybe I can crouch past and be okay. Please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't. You can hear the Ventress breathing in the walls and also walking through them too. And you'll also start breathing if she gets close enough. Oh damn, there's no door here. But we might as well loot. I might have to start running here. I didn't fully go down this way, so there might be progress this way. What is there to finding an elevator besides RNG? Uh, you, you can bring a pager. Otherwise, it's RNG. There's an open door here, so there's got to be progress this way. Or not. This is the loot room that they spawned in. Oh, damn. Loot is currently at 240. I think if you're going to set a record... On the demo for loot, you have to do it on day one, when the loot potential is at 100. There's an elevator. Fantastic. Oh shit, I'm late, I'm late. Oh, I did not realize how late it was. I don't think I make it. I thought that was the 10pm one. I thought that was the 10pm one. Oh, let's see. Nah, there's no way. There's no way. I think you have to make it into the elevator by like 11. Yep. <laughs> oh well. Ooh, Nico just sent me uh, his, the VODs of his runs for experimentation and assurance, so I'll be sub submitting those to the High Quota HQ leaderboards after this stream. By the way, Nico, if you want to if you want to duo for this real quick, I'd be down. Get it? Let's get a run in. I'll give you some time though. I'm gonna I'm gonna go one more day. Although at the same time I died too, so oh I also lost my equipment. So this would be a reset for sure. Wait, can I disconnect here? Oh, okay. So you if you want, I guess if you want to keep playing the demo without resetting the demo. Just quit out after day two. <laughs> because if you complete day three, it gives you that end screen. You're down for a run? Word. 